Okay, so this video is just going to show you how to quickly graph a parabola when you're given a vertex form. Vertex form is this form right here, uh, where you have x, you have something often in brackets, something x minus or x plus something in brackets squared, and then a plus or a minus on the end. Okay, this vertex form from previous videos um, quickly tells you where the vertex is. Surprise, surprise, it's called vertex form. Um, what you do is you you pick um, you look inside the brackets here and you take the opposite of whatever you see there. So if it's x minus 2, you would say, well, the vertex is going to be the opposite of minus 2 is plus 2, so you just write 2. And then the 7 on the outside here, you just take it as it is. and You say, okay, our vertex is 2 and 7. And just for a, a quick review, what if it said x plus 2 here? Well, what's the opposite of x plus 2? It would be x mi or sorry, it would be a negative 2 instead of a plus 2. So you'd put a negative 2 and a 7 if you had a plus 7 on the outside. If you had an equation that said x minus 5 minus 9, you would take the opposite of minus 5, and put it right there, you'd put 5, and you would put a 9 right here. So see how vertex form gives you the vertex super fast? There's other videos that talk about how to do that, and I guess I shouldn't be talking so much about that, because really what we're concerned with here is how do you graph this quickly? on paper if you're given vertex form. We're going to use something called the 135 step method. Here's how you do it. Step number one, start with your vertex. Okay, that's step number one. <clears throat> so two and seven. Two across, seven up. Sounds like the pop. There it is. Now the 135 step method goes like this. You look at what's in front of this entire uh, vertex form here. You look at, well, they call this the A value sometimes, but the number in the very front. In this case, there's no number there, it's just a 1. So, you, you're going to stick with the 1, 3, 5 method, okay? Here's what I mean by that. You're going to go 1 across and 1 up, okay? So, <clears throat> the 1, 3, 5 comes from you going one up. You go one over, one up. You're always going to be going one over with this method, okay? But the one, three, five, I guess I'll just let you see it as I work here, okay? So one over and one up. One over, one up. Now we're going to start from this point and go one over again, but instead of one up, it's the one, three, five method, right? So instead of one up, we're going to go three up. So one over and one, two, three up. Okay? From this point, you're going to go one over again and go five up. I don't think it's going to fit on our graph here. One, two, three, four, five. I was wrong. Okay? Now because this is a parabola, and you know that because you've been doing parabolas this whole time. Here, I'll, I'm going to kind of draw it as best I can. It's not easy to connect these points sometimes, and I'm not a great artist. But anyway, we need a whole parabola here, so what you're going to do is pretend this is like a mirror image. This is called the axis of symmetry, actually, and it has to be symmetrical on each side of this line that I'm drawing right here, that I'm pretending to draw. So, over here, you need one right here. Here's our axis of symmetry. It's two over from here, so go two over. Put another point right there. And then over here, it's um, from our axis of symmetry, it's one, two, three. So go one, two, three. You could do the 1, 3, 5 method going left too, by the way. You could just go 1, 3, 5, and you could draw it that way too. All right? It's not a bad looking parabola, in my opinion. And there it is. We've just drawn it. Um, it's good to label your parabola, but heck, it's this. This is the equation right here. <laughs> I've just labeled it. Okay, let's go to another question, because we're going to do three all together today, just to make sure you got this, okay? It's going to get easier as you practice this. Okay, step number one. Well, I guess I should get my parabola. So that, hmm. Let's locate the vertex, first of all. So what is the vertex when you see something like this? Don't worry about the two in front. Only look at this value right here, and this one right here. Remember you take the opposite of what you see in the brackets, Sometimes I tell my math classes with these things that the brackets always lie to you, okay? They're always lying. So if they give you a negative 2, the vertex is actually at 2. 
and 7. Remember, the 7 still remains exactly where it is. So 2 and 7 is our vertex. Um, by the way, the graph that I got here, <clears throat> I copied and pasted it from a really cool graphing calculator called Desmos. D-E-S-M-O-S. -S. I highly recommend you try this calculator. It works so well. It's really cool. Okay, so 2 and 7. I'm going to graph that vertex. 2 across, 7 up. If you know a few things about parabolas, if you look in the very front and if it's positive, you know that this parabola is going to be opening upwards. If there was a negative sign here, it would be opening downwards, like a frown, from this vertex here. Okay, but we know it's opening up, so I'm going to keep, I don't have to scroll down here anymore, I'm just going to leave that, leave this as it is. Let's do the 1, 3, 5 step method. So, on the last parabola, we went 1 over and 1 up, and then 1 over and 3 up, and then 1 over and 5 up. In this parabola, we're not going to be doing that. The reason why is there's a 2 here. When there's a 2 in the front, it actually stretches it vertically. It stretches it like a rubber band. It's going to be a skinnier, longer parabola vertically. Okay? So instead of 1, 3, 5 method, you're going to take and multiply 1, 3, and 5 by 2. So instead of 1, 3, 5, we're going to double it. Okay? Each one. We're going to double it. So it's actually going to be 2, 6, and 10. That's going to be a skinny parabola. Remember to always go 1 over, but it's the 2, 6, and 10 that we're concerned with. So you go 1 over and 2, then you go 1 over from there, and 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Does it look like we're going to go 1 over and 10 up right here? Absolutely not. There's no room. Your teacher would be totally fine, I'm sure, with just these, this many plotted points. You can do the same thing on the other side. You can do mirror image, or you can actually do the 1, 3, 5 method. So it's 2, 6, and 10 in this case. 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I can't do the 10, as you know. So I'm just going to kind of connect this parabola. I'll show arrows that it's going forever upwards. But this is our parabola, and it is done. It is graphed. If you check this out on Desmos, if you were to type this exact equation into Desmos, you would get a really nice looking parabola, done by a computer, of course, so it wouldn't be quite as rewarding as this beautiful parabola we have just drawn together. Let's do one more question, okay? You never know. Sometimes they throw little curveballs at us. Look at this one. We have a plus 6 inside the brackets. We have a negative 4. We can ignore this negative 1 half for now. So let's do that. Let's just find the vertex. The vertex is the opposite of the 6 because the brackets always lie. The 4 on the end is a negative 4 and that does not lie to us. It tells us the truth. Okay? It's the inside the brackets right here that lie to us in the equation. Negative 6 and negative 4. Let's plot that right now. Oops. Here's our x axis, axis right here. Negative 6, negative 4. There's our vertex, a very important starting place. Now ask yourself, does this parabola open up or down? Look where my pen is pointing. It opens down because it's a negative there. Good call. Now, the 1, 3, 5 step method. You look at the value in front right here, and it's this time it's 1 half. You're going to have to multiply all of these numbers in the front by a half. What that's actually going to do is make this parabola compress. It's going to get wider vertically, okay? It's going to it's going to get squished, I guess. It's going to be a wider parabola than normal. So, <clears throat> instead of 1, 3 and 5, just multiply each of these by 1 half, which is actually going to end up being I'm going to put it as a decimal, 0 0.5. What's half of 3? 1.5. What's half of 5? 2.5. Okay, so this is going to be our method here. So we're going to go 1 over just like usual. Instead of 1 up like we, would, we were doing before, 1 over, 1 up, <clears throat> we're going to go 1 over, and we're going to move downwards because it's a negative parabola. It's moving down. And we're not going to go down 1 like normal. We're going to go down a half. Then we're going to move 1 over again. And according to what I see on the left there, it says go down 1.5. So go down 1. There's one jump. Be very careful here. And a half. It's going to be right there. 
Feel free to push pause on this video if you're stuck, if I'm going too quick. Push pause and check and see that I went 1.5 down from here to here. Okay, as usual, you go 1 over, but this time we're going to go 2.5 down. So, 1, 2, and a half. Now, this parabola is a little wider than a normal parabola. I really don't like that drawing. I'll see if I can connect it a little bit better. I don't know if you care, but I care. Okay, do the mirror image on the other side, okay? One over and a half. One over and one and a half. One over and two and a half. Isn't this a fast way to graph a parabola? Okay. It's so fast. These questions, we just did three of them. Who knows how long it took? I'm guessing maybe 10 minutes, but I was talking the whole time, and you can go a lot quicker. But there's our parabola. We've just drawn it, and this time it was compressed vertically because it had a one-half. Anytime you have a fraction like a half or a third or one-fifth, one-eighth, two-fourths, well, that's the same thing as one-half, so I should stop talking. Um, I believe that's the end of this video, folks. Hopefully you get it, and if you do, congratulations. Practice it now.